We have a phone call. This is from Steve in Toluca, California. Hey, Steve. Hi, Beck. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Good. How can I help you? Well, I'm a professional photographer, and oh. I am ready to upgrade my monitor from my little old 14-inch to a 17 or 19. And my main concerns are being able to match my print output color with my monitor color. Okay. Well, first of all, I cannot believe you've been using a 14-inch monitor. That is brutal, especially in your business. Uh, I was reading, I think it was PC Computing a couple of years ago. They were saying that the best upgrade in productivity is for a monitor. Because the more surface and real estate you have, the better you can work and the faster you can access all the things you have. So, uh, you know, we heard that you were going to call. We got a couple things set up to show you what the differences are and some of the things you should be looking for in CRT, cathode ray tube quality. So come on over. I want to show you um, this. I have a couple suggestions for you. This is a 15-inch monitor, which is, a, is it about the size that you've been using. Is that yeah, about? about there. Okay, so maybe one inch bigger than the 14-inch you have. Now, this is a 19-inch. Size, <laughs> size matters. You didn't mm -hmm. hear me say that. <laughs> but this is really important. This monitor is going to make a huge difference in the way that your work gets done. Now, the first thing I'm going to suggest for you, and this isn't necessarily an issue of color matching and the things that you mentioned, but really important for folks who are doing digital imaging. This monitor and this monitor are both accessing the same computer. We have two graphics cards in there, and because we're running Windows 98 or higher, you can have all of your tools. I've got Photoshop open here, and watch what I can do. I can actually drag this over here, and I can just be working in two monitors at once. So that gives you a lot of real estate. Do you think that might be something you'd do, Steve? Uh, that's a very strong possibility, yeah. You just really have to get an extra graphics card and make sure that you have the right slot for it. We're going to talk a little bit about AGP versus PCI slots later, so stick around. I'll explain why that's important. Now let's get down to some of the issues of getting really good quality, image quality. First thing to think about, resolution. Resolution is the number of pixels in the horizontal and vertical directions. So probably on a 19-inch monitor, you might have 1024 across by 768 down. And so you'll see numbers like that, 800 by 600, 1600 by 1200. Those are some of the higher resolutions. Now let me show you how this manifests in the way you actually use your computer. It gives you more real estate. I want to show you a low-resolution photo. This is 800 by 600. The thing to keep in mind here, this is a desktop at 800 by 600. Look how big the icons are on the left. And you can see that you're, you've got a smaller amount of area to work with because the actual icons and the items are bigger. Now let's look at a higher resolution photo. Now look how small all those icons are that are jammed up into the upper left-hand corner. Look how tiny the font is. But look at all the room you have to work with in that area. So you want to make sure that if you're getting a 19-inch, you have options. At least 1280 by 1024 or 1600 by 1200, because at times you may really want to have that high resolution to work with some big items. Uh, next thing, refresh rate. Refresh rate is the number of times that the gun, the actual cathode ray tube gun, shoots, the electron gun, the photon gun, shoots out all of the uh, images, the phosphors that draw the screen. Okay. Now, what TV cameras have a hertz rate. They scan all, so they refresh, and we normally match those, but what I've, we've just done is we've unmatched them, so our TV cameras are scanning at a different rate, and it shows you, just to give you an idea of what this picture drawing is like, it's actually top to bottom. Now, how does this manifest in real life? You may have seen an older monitor that flickers or has a scan rate that you can see, and it's tough on the eyes, so you want to make sure that you have a refresh rate of 75 hertz or higher, okay? Now, let's move on to some of the other things you want to think about real quickly, dot pitch. Dot pitch is the distance between the physical phosphors that are shot out. It's the distance between those actual dots. It's measured in DPI, and you want to get something that's at least 0.25 or less. The smaller the distance between the dots, the better the monitor. Don't get a monitor that has a dot pitch of more than 0.28 millimeters. Now, finally, a real obvious one, the footprint. That's the actual size of how big this is on your desk. Don't get something you can't fit on your desk. That's kind of obvious, but you might want to think about it. Um, the last thing, monitors are really subjective. You have to eyeball them. These things, if it looks right to you and you like the way the controls work, you feel good about the monitor, trust your gut instinct. You want to get your eyes on these. You don't want to necessarily buy these off the web. Look at somebody else's monitor. Go down to a computer store. These things are ex experiential. I highly suggest that you take a look at them and trust your gut. Okay?
Okay. Steve, I hope that you get a monitor that you really like and that those elements help you to uh, deal with some of the color matching. I also am going to put in the show notes a tool you can use once you get your monitor to just really fine tune all of those settings. And this is uh, something that you should really use. It's called Power Strip. It's great for digital imaging professionals. I'm going to put that in the show notes. So check in with those after the show, okay? Okay, great. Thanks. Hey, take care.